Operations is all about rhythm. I think a good home building company has great rhythm. The starting of homes, consistent even flow of starts of homes, consistent department meetings uh, as leadership. I think great rhythm is one of the most important things of a successful home building business and really successful people. This interview is brought to you by O'Neill Interactive. O'Neill Interactive designs and develops high performance, award-winning websites for home builders all across the United States. More leads, more sales, and smart, friendly support. O'NeillInteractive.com. Hey everybody, Quint Lear's NewHomeSales.com. I'm very proud to have David Nielsen on the program today. David, how you doing? Happy to be here. We caught David on the road, and uh, I know you're a busy guy. Thanks for making time for us. Professional Builder Magazine, 40 Under 40, president of Cole West Homes. You've had a big career in a short time uh, in new home sales and in the home building industry. Uh, how does it feel to be in the home building industry and to have uh, such success so quickly? I I love the home building business. I, in my opinion, there's no better business out there. Um, it's dynamic. It's different every day. And so I, I can't see myself being anywhere else but home, but in home building. Good. Tell me about uh, Cole West Homes. Cole West Home, um, we are a home builder in southern uh, Utah. We focus on second home buyers, retirement buyers. Um, we have a, we do a pretty quite a bit of work in vacation rental, new home sales, uh, which is kind of a new upcoming segment. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll, I think we're a mid-sized builder. Uh, we're not huge, but not small. I think this year we'll close close to 190 homes. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's a great number for that market at this time. It's not a huge market, but I think we'll be there for a while. Well, congratulations on your success. You said something interesting um, that it's a dynamic business. Yeah. And I think you're a dynamic human being. I mean, you, you, you have a lot of uh, varied, I mean, from uh, a little bit about Dave, besides 40, 40 under 40, just from a kid, you were, you know, Eagle Scout. You, you, you speak Japanese a little bit. You've been in land acquisition. So you, you've played a number of different roles in the home building industry. Yeah. Tell me what, what roles have you played? And, and Yeah, um, I think my foundation is in land, land acquisition, land development. Um, that's what I did with Hakes Brothers. That was my first job in the business in southern New Mexico, and that's where you and I met, obviously. Um, and uh, so, yeah, my real foundation is in land acquisition, land development, understanding, breaking down markets. Um, when I was here in Hakes Brothers, um, we went into new markets and broke into new markets. And so that's something that I learned to do quickly as far as identify opportunities in new markets and then go after them. And then now, in the last three or four years, I've really just focused on the operations side and uh, getting better and better at that every year. I think I still have a long ways to go, but uh, it's, again, I, I love that it's dynamic. There's something different in this business every day. One day I'm looking at a pro forma on the financial side. The next day I'm hunting down, trying to find great sales talent out in the field, and uh, it's just something different every day. And I think uh, people like you and I need, need variety of life, right? And yeah. home building really offers that every day. So we're, we're, what I think is interesting, there, I, you know, I see left-brained people yeah. and right-brained people. You seem to be kind of both. You know, like you said, like one minute I'm doing pro forma, next thing I'm doing uh, yeah. finding sales talent, motivating sales team, looking at a marketing side. True. So how do, you, how do you develop both sides of the brain and tap into both? I don't know. Um, I, I was a banker. I don't know if you knew this about me. But I knew everything about you. <laughs> I worked in commercial banking for two or three years before... I came into the home building business and I loved um, the analysis side of it, right? Looking at income statements and balance sheets and breaking down these companies. But uh, I would walk home every day not happy. And it was because I was stuck in this cubicle. And um, I loved kind of the analytical side of it. It really pushed me intellectually, but I wasn't having this interaction with people that that I need and I've always needed that I'm a social person 
And so, yeah, I don't know how it came to be, but I've always needed both, you know, kind of the intellectual side and the social side. And it's just how I was born, I think. You have kind of a relaxed enthusiasm, which I like, because I've seen you uh, in action, you know, with the developer, and you're like, look, hitting with numbers, but then you're, you have kind of an energy. So I, what I want to do is let's break it down. Okay, you, you have a, a master's in, in real estate development yeah. and finance. Um, but let's talk about land. Let's break down as, as role of president. You, tell me the different roles that you play, just like one through five. It's, I, I do something different every day, right? Um, I have great leadership um, in my company. I have a great director of sales and marketing. I have a great director of operations. I have a great director of construction. Um, you need to know a little bit of a base trip. A little bit. So, um, what I want to know is this. Let's say if we take land acquisition. Okay. Yeah. Let's. What makes a person successful at land acquisition? So you're expanding a company. Okay. Going back, let's say ten years. How long have you been in the business? Uh, close to ten years now. Okay. Yeah. We're going back in time 10 years, and there's a little David Nelson right, right here. And you say, David, look, this is what you need to look for. You got to be able to build relationships quickly. Um, land acquisition is all about building trust quickly. Um, you're dealing with big numbers really quick. And a lot of people have been burnt out there, unfortunately, in the world we live. And so you need to be able to... Um, build a relationship, identify the movers and shakers in a, in a um, region, and then go build relationships with them and build trust and let them know that uh, you can be trusted. And when you tell them that you're going to do something, you're going to do it every time. Okay, now let's dumb it down. Let's say that I'm a new land acquisition guy. I'm into a town. How do you find out the movers and shakers? Do you go to the yellow pages? Do you go to Google? Do you go to the home building industry and say, who are the movers and shakers? I mean, and then when you meet them, do you like, hey, let's meet for coffee? I mean, how? Let's get really specific. Um, it's a in the markets I've worked in. It's actually a pretty small group, and so you meet one, you can kind of figure out who the rest are, and uh, these guys or gals are usually uh, older, mature people, and they don't like a text message. Uh, they don't like. I, I think they like phone calls, right? So I'll go in, I'll find one, and then I'll start asking referrals after I met with that one. You know, who do you know who else are, is selling property in this region? Who else is selling finished lots? And they all know each other. And so if you can press one, I think you can impress them all. How do you build trust? Is it, um, hey, look at my resume, or do you, what, give me a dialogue, pretend I'm a developer. What would you do to establish trust with a person of influence? See, it's really not um, trust, it's action. I think that's how you build trust. Um, and so it starts with small commitments. Hey, I'll meet you at Starbucks at this time. You need to be there at that time, right? Um, I'm going to follow up with this information by this time. They better get a prompt email saying, hey, here's what you asked for. Here's what I'm going to give you. And so it starts with small things, but trust is built not on words, but actions. And it starts with small things and it grows into big, bigger things. And that first deal with any land developer, any landowner is tough. You know, and it's difficult. You start sliding into the, the contract side and the legal ease, and everyone needs to protect themselves. But after you get through that first deal, and they've seen that every time you've stepped up to the plate when you said you would step up to the plate and that you were transparent in all your dealings, uh, the trust is there until you break it, basically. And so it's just, it starts little. You get through that first deal. And if you can execute on that first deal and follow through with your commitments, you'll be, you'll be good from there on out. How do you negotiate? So you have some powerful personalities, people with a lot of money. So, I mean, you walk up, hey, I ain't going to give you this. And they're like, I don't care. You can take it or leave it. You know what I mean? How do you successfully bring people down? Because yeah. land, if you get a good land deal, the builder's going to do well. The salespeople are going to do good. Yeah. But how do you negotiate that without making people mad? Um, I'm transparent more than most uh, to the point where um, with some partners I've been negotiating with, I show my numbers. Um, and it's really, hey, we need to get to this point to be able to sell homes at this price so that we can be competitive here, and we need to be able to get finished lot prices or raw ground, and you just back into it, and um, yeah, sharing information always builds trust quickly, and so, I'm yeah, I'm pretty straightforward about where we need to be and how we need to get there, and then I show them the facts on why that's true. Okay, so great, 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 great stuff. If you could go back again, what would you tell yourself 10 years ago? Like you could pull yourself and you're saying, hey, look, David, look, 
you did this, you did this, you did this good, but don't forget that. What would it be the advice that you would give yourself, knowing what you know now? I, someone, uh, someone gave me great advice when I was young. Uh, they gave me a book. It's called Never Eat Alone. Um, Keith, it's Keith Fazari, or Keith starts with an F. I can't remember the last name. Yeah, Orange Book. But um, they said, Dave, you need to read this book and understand the importance of networking. And uh, that book's blessed my life a hundredfold. Every great opportunity I've had is through net networking, me picking up the phone, me shaking a hand, introducing myself, then following up and developing a relationship. And it's so important for young people, um, especially now. You know, these I, I hire a lot of millennials. I call it millennial muscle, right? And they're fast-paced, hard-working guys or gals. But uh, sometimes you have to help coach them through connecting the dots on building good, strong relationships. And uh, there's a little piece there missing. But if you can have that millennial muscle that can build some relationships, those are the most powerful um, personalities and, and workforce in this day of age, I believe. Well, and I don't know if it's a millennial thing rather than a mindset thing. Yeah, for sure. It, yeah, yeah. It's we matter what generation. Yeah. There's some people that are old. And I, I see you... Is super influential. You're you're kind of like the submarine, you know, making big things happen. But not a lot of people know you. You're not you're not on billboards. You're not on social media. You're not posting pictures all the time. Yeah. You're kind of like the, the the stealth mode. Yeah, I don't. I'm not on any social media. Um, it's just it's just distracting. I and uh, I don't. It's more of a Dave thing than what social media is. But uh, I try to stay focused on what I can and. And sometimes social media takes away from that. And so, yeah, I, I, I try to stay away from that, and I try to stay real focused on the task at hand. Okay, now let's switch. Anything else about land acquisition? Uh, no, I think we've covered Any it. Any big mistakes or something you're like, oh, gosh, you know. Yeah. I was actually driving some, some of the first lots I ever bought. I, w I drove by that just a few days ago and made a huge mistake. It w I um, bought these lots. I got an awesome deal on them. And uh, I forgot to check around who had who owned the lots around them. And uh, I bought one whole side of the street. And then the first day we started a home on one of those perfect lots across the street, there was a um, there was a builder. I don't want to name names, but there was a builder that builds really really affordable homes to the point where this home didn't have a garage across on it. Mm. And it. Um, really it was really hard to sell those roll homes that i that uh and so so i learned a great lesson you know whenever you're buying land or finished lots you need to look around and figure out who owns what around before you close the deal well you know tom ritchie says walk the site with the buyers like walk the site and you will write but i wonder with land acquisition if it's if you want to do it right you got to walk the site yeah oh yeah yeah you got to walk that dirt in and out every inch of it to do it right for sure yeah um any books on land acquisition? Anything that's been helpful to you in that field? I can't think of any books. Um, I think a lot of that's just surrounding yourself with good people that have done it a lot, um, always asking questions. But, yeah. Any mentors that you have? Um, yeah, I have a lot of mentors. The one, one I work for right now, his name's Colin Wright. In my mind, he's probably one of the best minds um, in land, land acquisition there ever was. I call him the Michael Jordan of land acquisition, and I joke around with him, but... but uh, What's his big secret? He builds relationships quickly. Um, he's usually the smartest guy in the room, um, but he can help people connect the dots really quickly, and then he has a reputation to close. Um, he can identify good deals really quickly um, before he even gets into deep due diligence and because of that he doesn't waste a lot of people's time he can identify it and then more than not he closes uh, the deals that he starts and um, yeah it's a reputation thing at this point so I love that the, the you know person to person build relationships um, establish trust by meeting commitments let's switch to operations yeah. what have you learned being in operations what are some tips how are you successful in that arena um, operations is all about rhythm I think a good home building company has great rhythm um, and in so many different ways. Um, my wife's uh, an elite endurance athlete and she once told me that in the last few miles of a race she starts kind of chanting something in her brain and she 
she chants, my, my heart is strong, my legs are fast. My heart is strong, my legs are fast. My heart is strong, my legs are fast, over and over. And that helps her get in this rhythm where she can be able to push through where a lot of people can't push on those last few miles and be able to maintain a cadence and a pace where a lot of people can't. And I think home building um, a good rhythm is so important. Uh, it starts with the starting of homes, consistent, even flow of starts of homes has a great ripple effect through the whole company and um, workflows, cash flows, energy flows, um, consistent department meetings uh, as leadership. Uh, when times are good and when times are bad, being able to hit that rhythm every day. Uh, marketing and sales efforts. I think great marketing and sales efforts, great sales minds like yourself, there's consistent things you do every day to be able to be successful and you're putting the pennies in the piggy bank every day. Um, and so I think great rhythm is one of the most important things of a successful home building business and really successful people. That's fascinating to me. Well said. Uh, it's in sales. I like to say you need harmony. Yeah. yeah. And so I've never heard of that. So it's almost like a builder sets the, the rhythm yeah. and then the salesperson kind of like creates harmony or, or yeah, I love that too. Yeah, I completely agree. If they can, if a great builder can, start the beat and then a sales guy can harmonize with that same beat there's special things that happen in those communities as you know you know it reminds me if anybody flies um american airlines they have that commercial right and it starts off at like hi welcome to american airlines and it sounds like this like this rhythm there's a certain rhythm matter of fact in the book um power of positive thinking he says there's a rhythm to everything like if you're in a factory and if you can tap into that rhythm it's a it's extremely powerful i remember i remember uh, reading that book and then f trying to find the rhythm of where you were at. Yeah. You know, that's well, yeah. well said, man. Yeah. Uh, Anything else about operations? Um, it starts from the top, top down. Um, I challenge all the leadership in our company to make a daily to-do list. Um, basically, you, you put the things that are that you need to get done that day. You prioritize them on the right hand side of the page, and on the left hand side of the page, you plan your day out every 30 minutes. You put your set appointments in there, and then you pick um, your most important thing and start inserting them into your gaps, and that's how you need to attack your day every day. That's another rhythm thing that I think is really important. Now, going from, and by the way, I know you've got an appointment. What time is it right now? Do you have a... Uh, oh, I'm out of battery. It's close to 10. Is it? Okay, a couple more minutes. Yeah. Do, you, do you have, um, with just transitioning into sales and marketing, Give me some tips, traps, tactics. What are some things that you've seen? What's successful? What have you learned? Um, I mean, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm preaching to the king of sales right now. So I don't, I don't have much more to offer that you do. But I think a great sales person like yourself, Quint, um, has can do two things really well. They can close a deal when it's time, and that's an instinctual thing and something that you can practice and learn how to do and sense when it's time to close a deal, but then they also can prospect and mine um, new home customers or leads to be able to drive their own um, traffic into a, a new model home. And the greats do both really well. And I see a lot of um, sales professionals that can do one or the other really well, but the special ones can do both. Awesome. Marketing, what are some things that have worked? What are some things that don't work? Um, I think in new home sales marketing going after um, using consultants and advertising agencies that niche and specialize in new home sales is really important. Um, I've tried a, a bunch of different things, and uh, marketing can be frustrating. You know, some of the basics of home building is the typical blocking and tackling is good billboard, good directional signs, and those are really important things. But they're really hard to quantify from a budget, from an analytical guy like me. It's hard to quantify the value of a great billboard or great directional. And so I think moving forward, um, working digitally is going to be a really important thing. And um, it's already happening, right? But you can put time, energy, and money into digital campaigns and working on the Internet yeah. and be able to really quantify, you know, what leads you've generated with those with that energy and how much it costs per lead and I think that's a really powerful thing and with more and more people starting on the internet and pretty much everyone does it's that that the digital footprint that all home builders have 
is really critical and becoming more and more important every day. Beautiful, man. Um, any last words? I know you've got to go, and thanks for making the time. Um, anything going on, man? What are you excited about? How did it feel to win the 40 under 40? It was cool. Yeah, it was it was fun. I, there's not uh, there's not a lot of really young people in this industry. Anytime I find a trade partner that's in their 20s or 30s, I run over to them and I shake their hand. And I say, hey, it's going to be you and I in the next 10 years, and so we got to stick together, type of thing. So um, it was fun. Um, and uh, more than anything, I'm just excited to be here with my friend Quint Lears. I appreciate this opportunity. It's been fun, and I'm a huge fan. I follow you from a distance all the time so i appreciate you it's an honor to have you on the program with david nielsen the best in the business man uh and anything like what's next for you man uh, just another world domination oh just another hard days of work all right that's it we're proud of you thanks for having on the program here at newhomesales.com